I always find uh, the scramble for Africa such an interesting topic um, because of how controversial it was. Um, between 1880 and 1900, the vast majority of Africa uh, was colonised by European powers. Um, the reasons for that were were, were various. Uh, you had hum humanitarian reasons um, to genuinely uh, help uh, the populations, but mainly it was about prestige, it was about money, it was about trade, um, and it was also there was also a religious element. Uh, so it was about almost Christianizing large parts of of Africa as well. Um, uh, so there was that kind of superiority complex uh, that European powers had towards Africa that they were now able to uh, able to express. Um, and, and as Africa was colonised, more and more tensions uh, between the great powers over Africa um, kind of typified that period, um, 1880 through to about 19, uh, 1914, really, the start of World War I. Um, most of those tensions, or in fact all of those tensions, were solved without major conflict between the great powers. Um, uh, you know, you may have heard of the conflict over Morocco, um, 1905 and 1911, the two Moroccan crises that led up to World War One. Even those crises that involved Germany didn't um, directly lead to a war between the great powers. They could have, but they didn't. And you'd have to say the Moroccan crisis um, or the two Moroccan crises, probably the closest that an issue in Africa came to actually causing a war between the powers. However, that didn't mean that there weren't major conflicts that have been going on. And the first one really to mention was, I mean, if you look at the map uh, and look at the countries, this is who got what really in 1884. Um, there was a big conference in Berlin in 1884 that was called by Bismarck, who was the leader of Germany um, at the time. And this conference was called um, on the premise that um, all the countries in Africa needed to be directly declared uh, by European powers. And those European powers needed to make their presence felt in those areas. And this came about because up to this point, European powers had been saying things like, well, we, uh, Britain, for example, we have influence over this area of land, but they weren't putting borders around it. They weren't putting people in it. And other countries were saying, well, what gives you the right uh, to, to say that? And, and what if I was to challenge that? And the classic example was the Congo. Um, in 1878, um, or in 1877, sorry, uh, King Leopold of Belgium set up an organisation, <laughs> hilarious if you think about it, called the International Association. It was, it was guised as a charity uh, to help in a humanitarian way the people of Congo. In reality, it was his way of staking a claim to the Congo by negotiating trade agreements with the tribal leaders in the Congo. And it was almost a backhanded way of taking control of the Congo. And Britain wasn't happy about this. And Britain, you know, said to said to Bismarck and others, listen, you know, we've got to sort this out. We can't have people uh, managing to take control of uh, countries, taking control of land without international agreement and, and consensus. So they called a conference, and at that conference, they basically dished out uh, territory. Now, Britain, as much as the other countries in Europe hated it at this time, was the naval superpower, um, and that was undisputed. So in that respect, Britain could lay claim to much more land than perhaps other countries could. France was a close second. And you can see on the map very clearly what Britain's plan was. Britain had a very, very, very clear colonial policy, and that was Cape Town to Cairo. Their plan was to create this uh, bridge between, not, not an actual bridge, but a trading, uh, a, a, tr a line of trade uh, between Cape Town uh, in South Africa and Cairo in Egypt. Um, and they wanted to take territory, uh, so therefore there would be no issues with crossing borders because all of those territories would be controlled uh, by, by Britain. And you can see that in the map uh, very clearly, the British territories. The French, meanwhile, 
um, wanted to go east to west. Uh, so their idea was to go across Africa. Now, you can see very clearly on the map where those where those paths are going to cross. Um, and that's actually in the Sudan. Um, and, and particularly, as we're going to discuss later, in a place called uh, Fashoda. But another reason that the Berlin Conference was called in, in 1884, and, and the countries were distributed in this way, or distributed in this way, Previous to that, um, this all started in about 1878, Egypt uh, was a major issue. Um, in 1878, the French and the British uh, took control of, of Egypt's finances uh, because it, it was basically bankrupt. Um, in about 1882, a guy called Arabi Pasha in Egypt was fed up of British and French rule and basically rebelled. Uh, the British sent an army to Egypt to defeat Arabi Pasha in 1882, which they did. Um, now, the, the, they've put him down. Um, they've made sure that they can keep financial control over Egypt. What they actually ended up doing was keeping an army there for about 40 years, <laughs> which um, none of the Egyptians uh, really thought was going to happen when the British army arrived there in 1882. They didn't think that they'd be there. Uh, for another 40 years. Um, in the meantime, uh, 1882 now, uh, in the meantime, uh, supervision of Egypt's finances were placed under the control of an international commission. Um, Germany, um, uh, Britain wanted control of Egypt. Um, France and Russia didn't want Britain to have control, uh, full control of Egypt. So, Two countries, two major powers, didn't want Britain to have control of Egypt. Britain needed an ally. Uh, who was it going to call? Germany. Uh, Germany stepped in and said, we agree that Britain should have financial uh, and basically military control over Egypt. Why did Germany do that? Because Germany wanted to lay claim to land, uh, particularly in East Africa, but also in other parts of Africa as well. It was desperate to get its hands on some territory. So it thought that by backing Britain over Egypt in 1882, uh, that it would do that. And, and this was a real sore point for the French. The French didn't like this at all. Uh, the reason being that a Frenchman actually built the Suez Canal um, in, in about 1860. Um, the Suez Canal, which linked uh, the Mediterranean uh, to the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. Um, and it was part of Egypt. A Frenchman had built it. A French company had built it. Um, but Britain had somehow ended up in control. And uh, the French didn't like this uh, much at all. Um, and, and also the British had, had Sudan. Uh, the French fancied that as well, uh, based on what we said earlier, that the French were interested in this east to west um, um, kind of conquering of east to west across Africa. Um, what the French did manage to do um, in the in the eighteen eighties um, was to set up their vast uh, West African empire, um, spreading through Senegal, Algeria, um, Upper Niger, um, all the way across towards the Sudan. Um, now, and the Central African Republic, I suppose, as it is as it is today. Um, they did they did manage to do that uh, um, and you can see on the map uh, huge tracts of land huge tracts of land uh, were under French control um, in the 1880s um, we mentioned the Berlin conference of 1884 uh, the Congo did end up uh, in the hands of Belgium um, you'll probably have heard the stories of, of terrible uh, crimes that were committed in in Congo Leopold basically set up uh, slave colonies there um, and, and, you know, limbs were chopped off, um, uh, children's limbs were chopped off, um, terrible conditions and crimes, all for profit, all for the rubber, uh, which was there, which, which Belgium uh, wanted to capitalise out of. Um, moving on from there, um, in Africa, there was also this, this Anglo-German rivalry, uh, which which began began really in the 1880s, uh, but was more uh, even more pronounced uh, in 1889 when uh, Cecil Rhodes officially took over Rhodesia, which you would now know as Zimbabwe, as modern day Zimbabwe. Uh, 
Britain, as you can see on the map, had huge swathes of land in South Africa and gold was discovered in the Transvaal in a, a region of South Africa, which made it one of the most valuable assets in Africa. And the Germans didn't like this. Uh, they didn't like the fact that Britain uh, had ended up uh, with the gold, so to speak. And that would actually come back um, to kind of haunt uh, Britain and Germany uh, later on with the Boer War. Um, Anglo-French rivalry towards the end of the 1890s got to its high point in 1898 um, when British and French troops um, were literally 400 miles apart uh, in the Sudan, which doesn't sound like much, but uh, it, we, when you think of the size of the Sudan, it, it was it was pretty close. Um, Britain had actually gone to the aid of the Italians um, in Ethiopia, who'd lost a massive battle in 1896 against the Ethiopians. Um, and Ethiopia would end up as the only neutral country in the whole of Africa because they won that battle against the Italians in 1896, against all the odds. Uh, Britain and Germany and other European countries were worried that Italy would completely collapse uh, and there'd be some kind of European uh, revolution. And so what Britain did is they acted to secure Italy. Um, they couldn't obviously do anything about Ethiopia, but they could just uh, help the Italians out in Somaliland and, and Eritrea. So they sent an expeditionary force in Sudan to crush the rebels, which they did uh, with ruthless, ruthless efficiency. Uh, the rebels lost, um, the Ethiopian rebels lost about 12,000 men. The British lost about 40 uh, in, in the big battle in 1898. The British took Khartoum, uh, the modern day capital of Sudan. The French um, advanced up towards the Nile um, and they stopped. And, and the British said, you better get out of the Sudan. The Sudan's ours. The French said, no, we're not moving. And, and they kind of went at loggerheads. And eventually the French backed down because they realised that the British had superior naval uh, forces and, and they didn't want a war with Britain, really, uh, at that time. And they backed down. And actually, after that point, after 90, uh, 1898, British-French relationships uh, got much, much better. And, and partly that was because of the aggression of Germany after that point leading up to, uh, to World War One. 